We're going to look some at hyperbolic circles right now. Okay, so first of all, um, let's talk about what a definition of hyperbolic circle is. Well, it's the same as the definition in Euclidean geometry. A circle is a set of points in a plane which are a fixed distance called the radius from a given point called the center of the circle. And these turn out to be hyperbolic circles. Now, before we get into that, let's, let's take a look at what remind ourselves what we mean by hyperbolic distance. So, of course, that fixed distance is a hyperbolic distance. And, of course, those points are points in our hyperbolic half-plane model. So, the first thing I want to look at is this vertical distance here and remind ourselves of the definition. So, we want to find the distance between points E and F that have the same first coordinate. So, they're on a vertical uh, line. Make the Euclidean line segment down to where that is, meets perpendicular to the uh, half plane edge and find that point on the edge which of course is not actually in the geometry. Then we take the Euclidean distances from E to G, in other words the Y coordinate of E and then we take the Y coordinate of F, the Euclidean distance from F to G, divide those two, take a logarithm and then take the absolute value to make sure we got a positive and that's how we define distance in terms of a vertical distance between uh, two points. Now let's take a look at that now and suppose we have a circle here. This is going to be our center. We want to find the points here and here somewhere that are going to be the same distance. So this distance here is going to be our hyperbolic distance D. So the, uh, the radius of our circle which is a hyperbolic radius, we're going to call, uh, actually let's just call it R. Okay, and so we want to take this distance here is going to be R, how that hyperbolic distance is going to be R, and that's going to be R as well. And no, they're not the same Euclidean distance. Okay, so what, what would that be? Well, somewhere down here you have your edge. Oh boy, use your imagination on that. Okay, and we're wanting to find these Euclidean distances here and here, which are just the Y coordinates, and then we'll need this one here. So let's call the Y coordinate of this one H. That's the Y coordinate of the center. We'll call, let's call this one Y and we'll call this one W. So these, these, are, high, these are Euclidean distances. So, so W, H, and Y are Y coordinates which correspond to Euclidean distances. Okay, now what do we need to do? We need to compute some, some hyperbolic distance R. Well, the hyperbolic distance R is the natural log of the absolute, uh, abs yeah, absolute value of the natural log of the ratio of these Euclidean distances, which are just the y coordinates. So, um, on the one hand, we can look at the, the one on the top. Let's look at the top. So, it's y over uh, h. So, this distance divided by that one. Now, the absolute value of the log. If you put the larger y coordinate on the top, these are all positive numbers, and the larger ones on the top, then um, um, this logarithm is already positive. So I can drop the absolute value. And we have that expression. So let's solve for y in terms of, of r and h. So we take uh, e to the power on both sides, e to the logarithm cancels, and we get y over h. And so we get y is h times e to the r power. And so that gives you the coordinate, the y coordinate of this point right here that's directly above the center. So the center is here. This one's the center. And this will be a point on the circle directly above it. 
and of course it'll have the same x coordinate, but that's going to be the uh, the y coordinate there. Okay, similarly let's find the y coordinate of this point down here, which is w. Well, we know r is let's take the higher bigger one, which is h. Divide distance down to here, and then divide that by w. Take a log, and then an absolute value. Again, we could drop the absolute value because I've arranged it so the, the larger one's on the top. Take e to the power on both sides. e to the r is h over w. We're solving for w, so we're going to multiply by w and then multiply by the reciprocal, so it's h times e to the minus r. So the, the y coordinates of those two points directly above and below are this. Actually, I probably should have used K for this if I'm going to go with a more standard kind of labeling of the center of the circle. So maybe I'll change all those H's to K's. Alright, and so this says if we have a, a center with coordinates H, K, then two points on the circle have the same first coordinate And the second coordinate is k times e to the minus r. And the other one is k times e to the positive r. And this is the point directly above the center. So this point is up here. This point's down here somewhere, directly below. And the center is somewhere here, closer to the bottom than it is to the top. Okay, now finding the rest of the points on the circle is a bit harder, and we're going to kind of uh, gloss over that a little bit informally now. So let's go back to our sketch here and look at what happens. So it turns out, and we'll, we, won't, we won't prove this, but we'll do it informally. We'll do a sketch pad, um, not proof, but demonstration. That, that it does turn out to be a Euclidean circle, but notice, of course, that the Euclidean center of this circle is different than the hyperbolic center. So here's the hyperbolic center. This one is determined by center and radius. So here we're given a radius, and of course, with, given that what we just did, we can find these points above and below. So by the way, then how could you how could you find this, the Euclidean circle going through these two points? Well, notice they're going to be on opposite ends of the diameter. So if we um, maybe draw our diameter in, which is here, now we need to find the Euclidean circle with that same, that's our diameter. That's a diametric uh, chord, actually. And so what we would do is we would find the Euclidean center of that line segment and make a circle centered there. <laughs> And that's going to give you your um, circle that we need. Okay, so if we, uh, you know, so we could start by taking this, construct a uh, perpendicular line, find these points with the coordinates here and here that we want, right? Make that line segment. find the midpoint of that line segment and then use our Euclidean tool and that will give us the circle that we want. Okay. So let's just hide all that. Okay, well actually let me just go ahead and delete that. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess up the sketch. Okay, so the, but that's how you could basically do it. And, it's, and the, you find those two points based on this parameter. So that gives you an idea how this tool was made. Okay? So the way the tool works is you, you start by defining any parameter you want. Um, number, new parameter. Okay. Call it radius. Um radius 1, radius 2, whatever, which is a distance parameter, okay, and that's going to be the radius of our circle, and then you can go here and select H circle by center and radius, 
So you do is select the center and the radius, and now you have you have this circle. Now notice what's interesting is this circle right here has a radius of one. This circle right here has a radius of one. So these are these are congruent circles, which shows you something about gives you some idea about how the uh, um, distance metric works. Here's a radial segment. This segment is staying the same hyperbolic length as we go around this circle. Okay. And of course, then you can also, you, once you've got that, you can define um, a circle based on two points by just measuring the distance of the two points, then use your other tool um, to create the circle. And so then you can easily make a, a, a tool then that, that, that operates by center and point on the circle. So that's controlled by this one. So this circle here, AB, uh, or circle centered at A, is the uh, circle A. This is the made by, was made by the center and point tool, and this one is made by the center and radius tool. Now, let's look at this picture here. So notice that this tool, this was made by that same tool, and notice that H, we can move this around, and notice that anywhere on here, the hyperbolic distance, as measured with our hyperbolic distance tool, is in fact the same uh, in this case right at the moment it's 0.29 centimeters and so this is um, definitely those points are on the circle then you look at the point I if you take any point here of course the point if you put it the same as G it would be zero distance from G but if you look all of these distances now are less than the 0.29 and so you can kind of see that anywhere in here is going to be in the interior of the circle it's closer to the center than uh, the radius. And if you go out here, now we're out bigger than 0.29, and you can convince yourself, I think, with this sketch pad diagram, that in fact we do have the, same, the right thing. Of course, this isn't a formal proof. To do this formally, we would have to show that in fact, if you're on this particular Euclidean object, that in fact that hyperbolic distance is always the fixed radius. Uh, you know, where we pick the right one, where these vertical and horizontal, these, these points vertically above and below it are the right points. And then we, we make this Euclidean circle show that it must be on there. And then if you're not on there, that it's, you're either going to have a distance less or greater than that. Okay, so we would need to do that if we wanted to prove this formally. But informally now, we can see what what uh, what we get, and we formally worked out at least what two of the points are if we know the center and the radius. So if we know the, the hyperbolic radius, that's a hyperbolic distance R, and these are just, just regular uh, coordinates, uh, XY coordinates of the center point. That is the, the uh, hyperbolic center. Okay, and we can see how to, to generate that. And so now that gives us an idea of what's going on with, with this. Okay. And uh, here's the Euclidean center of this one. Notice that the Euclidean center is always going to be directly above the uh, hyperbolic center. Um, at wherever we move this around. Here I'm fixing a point out here. Notice basically, you can kind of look at that, the smaller the radius is, the closer the hyperbolic and the Euclidean center, uh, you know, come to each other. And the further away it is, the, the further the radius is, the bigger the, bigger the distance is there. Okay. Uh, again, it's a good idea to read through this and go through some of these explorations. Okay, a couple other things. We have some, some how do some of the basic objects look in um, hyperbolic geometry? Well, uh, we have the same definitions that we would in Euclidean geometry. In fact, in unified geometry, we have the same definitions. So 
Remember the circle has a center, it has a radius, which is a distance. Uh, it's the length of that line segment there, the distance to any point on there. And a segment going from with one endpoint at the center and one on the circle is a radial segment. In this case, it's changing. By moving that, I can modify the radius of the circle, the size of it. So there we have a radial segment. A chord is a line segment with both endpoints on the circle. So there's a, a chord. And a chord going through the center is called a diametric chord. And we have that. This may disappear on me. But there's a place in here where it's actually a, a Euclidean line segment where it's vertical. But otherwise it's part. These are actually, of course, Euclidean segment, uh, hyperbolic segments. So they're actually arcs of curves unless they happen to be vertical. So there's a place in there somewhere where this, this goes, well there it is, where it's actually a, a vertical Euclidean line segment. Otherwise it's arc of a chord. You can talk about concentric circles. So these red circles over here on the left, these are all concentric about C. C is the center for all of these circles. And you can adjust these, uh, but they all have the same center C. So that's concentric circles. You also have some other concepts. If we have a circle here, we can talk about a secant line, which is a line which goes through two points on the circle. So there we got some got a secant line going here. Including there's some place maybe where it might be vertical. Okay, and then uh, arcs of a circle in terms of a Euclidean circle. You also can talk about a tangent line and it's a line which touches the circle in exactly one point. You can see these things have been constructed here to illustrate these concepts in this particular model of hyperbolic geometry. We'll talk about hyperbolic angles here in just in the next video.